Hi! Today I thought it would be fun to have like a sit down and chat with me kind of video, geek out with me on some of my favorite tools and materials, underrated tools, or things that I wasn't expecting to like so much this year. A lot of my projects involve paper, so that's the theme you're going to see here. So get comfy, or you can play this video in the background while you're doing something else, and let's get into it. First, I'm sure you're going to guess this, is the binding guide. I've been using this in a lot of my videos this year, way more than I anticipated on, and I do have a video going over the entire thing. It's basically a review video and it goes through in detail what comes with it and also how to use it. And just so you know, I'll include links to all the things I talk about in the description below. And you don't have to get it through Amazon if you don't want to. And there's also local or handmade shops that make similar things. So definitely shop around. I think this is a great beginner tool if you are just getting introduced to bookbinding. I'm still kind of curious to use a different kind of cradle, one that has like a deeper valley in this section. But for the most part, it's been very useful Definitely like the extra space below the holes. It makes it a lot easier to punch through paper and multiple sheets at that. I think the one advantage this has over a traditional cradle that you might find in specialty shops is that it has this flat area where you can also try to do like stab bindings or Japanese bindings. After a little over a year of use, it's still pretty well intact and it's getting me through bookbinding projects a lot faster. I also like that the whole measurements can be kind of spaced out already for me, but this doesn't include actual measurements printed on the guide, which I kind of wish it did. And I have seen some cradles that actually have that. So kind of still want to try a different cradle, but this definitely has helped me a lot this year. Something you haven't really seen me use in my videos, I don't think I've shown it at all, is this glue eraser, but I call it a booger eraser. <laughs> it's basically a giant piece of rubber. I think it's rubber and it's textured and it does a really good job at getting off dry glue from paper. I think I ended up calling it a booger eraser because way back when I was a full-time graphic designer, we had to mock up a lot of things like brochures and printed books. And this was always in the mock-up room and it looked like it had a bunch of boogers on it and it was kind of like textured, really gross, but it did a good job at getting off any glue, dry glue boogers of your project. So this one was a little over a dollar, I think. And this was what it looks like new. So it's going to look different over time, especially if you use it a lot. It does not work like a regular eraser does. Also, if you have like some weird specks in your artwork, like paintings, I've removed like little things on more delicate surfaces and it didn't leave any smudges. Something else I use a lot more this year are these huge 16 by 20 cardstock sheets. I got these about four years ago, maybe, and I needed more solid background colors in my projects while filming. I have jewel tones, uh, neutral tones, pastels, but something I didn't realize until after I got all of these is that the texture on them is kind of like a canvas texture, and when you're filming on that, it creates a moiré pattern. I think that's what it's called. Hold on, let me, let me check. It occurs when a scene or an object that is being photographed contains repetitive details like lines, dots, and it can exceed the sensor resolution. And as a result, the camera produces a strange looking wavy pattern. I did not like that pattern in the background of my videos. So I ended up not using this paper and it has stayed with me because I cannot throw away paper. I am kind of a paper hoarder. So they've kind of been like sitting in the back of my closet until this year when I decided I needed some really big poster paper. I didn't expect it to be so fun to paint on, but because that pattern is on it, not so great for filming on it, but it's a nice texture to paint on because it's similar to canvas. And I plan on making more painted patterns on these sheets because I just find it really enjoyable. So I'm actually glad I hung on to all of these packs and I don't know if you can really find them anymore. I got them at Joanne's craft store, but I honestly don't know if they still sell them. While we're on the topic of pattern paper, another thing is the wrapping paper from Society6. So I recently started putting some of my patterns on merch sites like Society6, Redbubble, or Teespring, 
and Society6 is the only one I've seen that has wrapping paper and it looked decent quality so that's why I wanted to try it out. I also like that there's a grid on the back and it is pretty thick for wrapping paper. It is still thin paper but thicker than your traditional wrapping paper. It comes in five rolls. Sometimes it's on sale for like $7. And I think that's a pretty good deal for five large sheets. And I think it actually worked pretty well for book projects. Of course, it could work well for the purpose that it's for, a wrapping presence. I didn't see much warping at all with it because it's a little thicker. And of course, I like that I can make my own and put my own design on it and pattern. And I also have bought some from other artists on Society6. So there's like so much variety you can choose from. And it's also nice that it's supporting artists. A tool that helped me work with this wrapping paper on my book projects is a brayer. I recently got this and I don't know why I haven't had one yet because it has become so useful. I think this one might be on the pricier side, so definitely shop around if you're looking for one. But I've also seen other brands like a Mod Podge one that could probably do the same job just as well. I originally got it for my Cricut projects because when you put vinyl on the mat, you need to like smooth it over the mat. But I've been using it on like almost all of my projects, especially book projects. It's pressing down pretty much the entire surface where sometimes the bone filter can miss some areas. And especially when I have paper on the more thin side, kind of like wrapping paper, that I need to make sure there's no air pockets and smooth it all out. Next thing is this multicolor thread, which I did review in a pack. I have a whole other video where I tested the pack of thread that it came in along with another thread that was popular on Amazon. You can check it out here. I think it's primarily made for leather projects, but I use it for book binding. And this pack came with this one multicolor thread and I finally got around to using it recently in a video on this book. And I think it turned out really fun. It adds like an extra texture to the binding. After about a year of using this kind of stuff on my projects, I have learned that it really helps to add some extra wax to it since naturally, because it's synthetic, it's smoother and it doesn't really want to stick to itself. So I think adding that extra wax to it just makes it a little bit more grippy and it holds to the binding a bit better. And this has made me want to try some other multicolor threads. I haven't shopped around yet to see what's available, but I do remember seeing some when I searched for this one. So maybe I'll have to try those out in the future. All right, now let's get into the pens. Well, it's a given, I like using pens. That's really not like an underrated item for me. This is where I keep all my jelly rolls. As you can see, it's overflowing. If you want to see a video showing how I organize all my pens in my closet full of supplies, go check out this video. I like jelly rolls, but I don't typically use the metallics. But lately, as I've been mailing more postcards and prints and stickers to my Limited Lemon Tier patrons, I like to include a little thank you note. I think it's a nice personal touch. So I kind of want to make them just a little bit special. And I ended up using the Stardust Jelly Rolls for that. I really like the quality of these. And also like, look at the design of these pens. The little color ball tip on the cap that stops ink from coming out. I don't know, the whole like design of these pens just makes me want to use them more. They are really fun to write with, especially when you just want to add a little something extra to a handwritten note. I think it makes it just that more special. And while we're on the topic of pens, I have more pens <laughs> that I want to talk about. This year I started using erasable pens, which I had not really used before at all. I talked about this in my recent planner review video. I liked using these Pilot Friction pens for my planning because I make a lot of mistakes and changes, so I needed to erase a lot more. I will say I wish the black pen lasted longer, but I did use it a lot. I also liked using the color sticks. I did enjoy using them because they felt like writing with a gel pen that could erase. And it also doesn't leave any little eraser bits left over on your paper, so there's nothing to like blow or wipe away. But I did notice if you want to write on top of the area you just erased, it does take some time because the paper still has a little bit of heat left in it. So you have to like 
wait five seconds or something until it's room temperature and then you write over the area. Well, thank you for geeking out with me over these supplies that I've used surprisingly a lot this year. If you have something that you have really enjoyed using this year in your stationery, art, or paper stash, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to read it and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for supporting my um, addiction to paper and stationery and paint and making projects with all of them. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, uh, check out the links below. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to check out more kind of art supply review type videos, I have a playlist for that right here. Links are all down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.